So let's begin by offering our respects to the founder Acharya of ISKCON. His the music is on. Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवानी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेश गोपिका कंत राधा कंत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचकलपतरुव्यश्च कृपा सिंधु व्यव पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्लीज रिपीट आफ्टर मी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओके सो वी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू आवर वीकली क्लासेस वेरी हैप्पी टू सी वी हैव हियर आंटी नीता देन वी हैव दीप्ति अदानी दिव्या अंजलि रंजीत आजा आयुष दिशा जाधवानी एंड दिशा मेलवानी देन वी हैव कल्पना करुणा भूमिका मंजू मीना वेंकटचारी नेहा पावनी रीटू लालवानी साकेत एंड वेंकटेश ओके सो डू वी हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस क्लास एनी डाउट्स व्हाट डिड वी सी इन द प्रीवियस क्लास we are on chapter number we are on chapter number second chapter of course 54 oh, thank you i was about to get a heart attack and what's the title of chapter 2 well oh. yellow book we can square square Yeah. Mm. Right side. Contents of the Gita summarized. 
contents of the Gita summarized. Okay. So Arjuna had five reasons not to fight the war. So far, Krishna has countered how many out of the five arguments of Arjuna? Three. Three. Which three? Compassion. Compassion. Um, enjoyment. Enjoyment. And the third one is... Third one, I don't know. Third one is... No, I don't remember. Who knows the third reason of Arjuna not to fight the war? Arjuna's third reason was fear of sinful reactions. Okay. So, uh, when uh, how did Krishna counteract Arjuna's compassion argument? By saying that uh, these people on the battlefield are already dead. Yeah, so? So, uh, this that they are souls and not the human body. So do not lament for, for them because they're already dead. Yeah, so basically by telling him the difference between the body and the soul, so, he told him that compassion should be for the soul, not for the body. But Arjuna's compassion was for the body. So that's how he countered Arjuna's compassion argument by jnana, by giving him the knowledge, right? of the difference between the body and the soul. So the first lesson of spiritual life is to understand that we are not the body, we are spirit soul. Then how did Krishna counteract Arjuna's enjoyment argument? He said Whether that... He died, whether he dies on the battlefield or wins the war, he will still enjoy. He will still enjoy. So how will he enjoy if he dies on the battlefield? To go to the higher planetaries, planetary uh -huh. systems. Yes, he will go to the higher planetary systems or he will enjoy in heaven. And if he does not die on the battlefield, how will he enjoy? He will enjoy his kingdom. <laughs> He will enjoy his kingdom, right? So that's how Krishna encountered Arjuna's enjoyment argument. How did Krishna encounter Arjuna's sin argument, that fear of sinful reactions? That time, what did Krishna say? So when, when Krishna, let's go back one step behind. When Krishna countered the enjoyment reason of Arjuna, Krishna was talking at which level in the yoga ladder? Karma, the karma, karma, karma kanda, kanda level, isn't it? So we saw jnana and we saw karma kanda. The first two arguments were counteracted by jnana and karma kanda. Now the third argument, fear, fear of sinful reaction, Krishna combined jnana and karma and he spoke about the buddhi, buddhi yoga. yoga yes buddhi yoga isn't it so he said you work but with knowledge you do your karma but with jnana so when you combine work with knowledge that is called as buddhi yoga or in other words is nothing but um, bhakti yoga that is because when you work with knowledge, then you bring in your intelligence that is intelligence okay how you work in such a way that you are not caught up in the good and bad reactions. So even if you have good reactions, you will be bound up in this material world because you go to heaven and you have to come back and bad reactions will take you to hell and again you have to come back. So either good or bad reactions, as long as there is a reaction, it means we are bound up in this material world. So when you combine work with intelligence, with, with jnana, with the knowledge that you're not the body but the spirit soul, so you dovetail the activities in Krishna consciousness. You do the same activities, but you Krishnaize the activities. You dovetail the same activities in Krishna consciousness. So then we are free from karma. Example, we eat, but we eat prasad. 
So now we are dovetailing the eating activity in Krishna consciousness. So now there is no reaction because when we offer the food to the Lord, there is no reaction in that food. Okay, even if we are eating vegetarian food or vegan food, if we don't offer it to the Lord, then it has some reaction. Because even you may be the strictest vegetarian or vegan on the planet, still when you cook the food, right, some living entities have lost their lives in that food. So it's, it's, it cannot be completely karma-free. Karma-free food is only when it is prasad. Only prasad is karma-free food, not vegetarian, not vegan. Okay, so like this, we dovetail all our activities in Krishna consciousness. So Krishna is combining jnana with karma. So that is buddhi yoga. And that's how Krishna counteracted the sin argument of Arjuna, saying that if you dovetail your activities in Krishna consciousness, then you don't take any uh, sinful reactions. Okay, so three arguments have been countered so far. What are the two remaining? Destruction of the dynasty. Ah, destruction of the dynasty or destruction of family values, right? Because the dynasty is destroyed, then there will be no more family values. Very nice. And the fifth argument is? Decision. Indecision. 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 Yes. So this we have to see later. So far, uh, I mean, in the third chapter, Krishna will counteract the fourth argument. And the last argument of Arjuna is counteracted in the last chapter, in the 18th chapter. Okay. Who can read today? Atachi, can I read? Yes, Neha. Thank you. Okay, so now we will. We are in the last section of chapter two, Sthita Pragya. So here, uh, Arjuna is going to uh, begin the section by asking questions, and Arjuna is going to answer those questions for the rest of the chapter. See, in the the previous verse that we saw in the previous class, uh, here in fifty three, Krishna is describing uh, a person whose mind is fixed up. Right, Krishna is saying that when the mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, he remains fixed in the trance of self-realization. So here Krishna is describing that when one is no longer disturbed by the flowery words of the Vedas, then he remains fixed up. His mind is fixed up, right? So therefore now Arjuna is going to ask what are the symptoms of such a person whose mind is fixed up? What are the symptoms of a person who is not disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas? See, the Vedas have four subject matters. Does anybody know the four subject matters of the Vedas? No meat eating, no intoxication, no... No. No, those are the Calm, four regulative Lord. principles. Dharma, Atharma, Kam, and Moksha. Dharma, Artha, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Yes, very nice. So, what is Dharma? Religion. What kind of religion? Material religiosity. Okay, karma kanda, that religion, because we discussed how the Vedas begin with material religiosity. Like, yes, you do, you engage in a religious practice, but I want something in return. Mm. So, yeah, so dharma means material religiosity. Then artha is? Material development. Yeah, economic development, yeah. right? Yeah. Financial uh, improvement. So dharma, artha, then karma. What is karma? Lust. Yes, sense gratification, right? And gratifying your senses or gratifying your lust. Then moksha? Liberation. Salvation. Liberation. 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 So this is the this is how the Vedas progress. Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Dharma means material religiosity. So when we engage in material religiosity or when we do these different religious practices, we want something in return, then automatically it improves our Artha, 
our economic development. When there is economic development, then automatically there is sense gratification because with our economic development, we gratify our senses. Then when we realize that no matter how much we gratify our senses, there is no satisfaction, then we come to the point of frustration. And then we want moksha. We just want to get out of this material world because we realize that we cannot gratify our senses in this material world. So dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Now, what does a devotee desire out of these four? Moksha. Moksha. A devotee no, desires moksha. No, no love of God. Love, Love of God. God, yes, because yes. because even beyond moksha, there is something, there is a higher goal. The highest goal, mm -hmm. moksha is not the highest goal. The highest goal is to develop love of God. So mm -hmm. a devotee does not want dharma, artha, kama. He does not even want moksha. The only thing he wants is he wants to serve the Lord. Now, it doesn't matter for a devotee whether he's serving the Lord in the material world or whether he's serving the Lord in the spiritual world. Not everybody who walks the planet, not everybody who's on the material world is conditioned. There are liberated souls also in the material world. So there are self-realized souls even on the material world. We don't know who is what. You don't know which soul is in which body. You may actually come across someone who may look like a complete, you know, tattered clothes, maybe a foul smell coming from his body, but probably he's a self-realized soul. You never know which soul is in which body. We cannot stay. So, so a, a devotee is beyond uh, dharma, artha, kama, and even moksha. So, so because here Arjuna has uh, said in fifty three that a person who, um, who is not disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas and his his mind is fixed up. Now Arjuna wants to know what are the symptoms of such a person, and this is what Arjuna is going to ask in fifty four and fifty five. And for the rest of the chapter, Krishna is going to answer these questions of Arjuna. So let's hear the verse. Oh, one second. Arjuna Huacha Sita Pragyasya Kabhasha Samadhisthasya keshava Sita dhihi kim prabhasheta Kima sita vrajeta kim Translation Arjuna said, O Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is thus merged in the transcendence? How does he speak and what is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? So I'm sorry, Arjuna's questions are only in 54, not 55. Actually, 55 Krishna speaks. So here, 54, Arjuna is asking, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is merged in transcendence? He wants to know how does this person, how do, uh, how does this person come across? How does he speak? What is his language? How does he sit? And how does he walk? Now, for a gross materialist, this may appear like, you know, somebody who's going for a beauty contest. So how to sit, how to talk how to walk, all these things are taught. But of course, Arjuna is asking deeper questions here. So he's asking, ka, ka bhasha, uh, kim, kim prabhasheta, kim ashita and brajeta kim. How does he speak? What is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? And what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is merged in transcendence? In other words, what Arjuna is asking here is, how does he... Like in Hindi, we say, no, wo kese pesh aata hai. How, does, how does he come across? This is what Arjuna wants to know. So first Krishna is going to answer Arjuna this question. What are the symptoms of such a person? Shri Bhagavan Vacha Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan partha manogatan Atman ye vatmana tushtaha Sita pragyasta dochyade Translation The Supreme Personality of God had said, O Partha, when a man gives up all the varieties of desire for sense gratification which arise from mental 
concussion and when his mind thus purified finds satisfaction in the self alone then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness so krishna is talking about the symptoms so he is giving us two symptoms here basically of such a person what are the symptoms krishna is saying he has given up all varieties for sense gratification so he does not have any desire for gratifying his senses and two he is satisfied in the self alone so he is self satisfied now this word here mind what do you think mind is internal or external external internal 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 so why do you say it's internal because we can we can see we can and uh, the thing is that what is the reaction we don't know means it can change mind can change any time okay so who said it's external me okay why do you say it's external ayush because uh, it's a part of the human body it's a part of the human body so how does that make it external which which part of the human body the, the body the has mind. different parts or body because uh, the only thing that's really like internal is the soul ah ayush come to the head of the class very nice okay see the see the the body has there are two bodies right gross body and the subtle body gross body is made of the five gross elements earth water fire air and ether gross body is what we see in the mirror mm -hmm. now subtle body is made of mind intelligence and false ego so if you look at the point of uh, view from the gross body you can say mind is internal because of course external is a gross body the mind is internal right it belongs to the subtle mm -hmm. body but if you look at the from the point of view of the soul then mind is still external only because the soul is covered first by the subtle body and then by the gross body see here you have the soul the soul is covered by intelligence mind and ego so this is the subtle body then beyond the subtle body you have this gross body which is made of earth water fire air and ether so this mind actually from the point of view of the soul is still external that's the reason why um, it's very hard see sometimes people say that oh i tried yoga of course now in the modern age the the meaning of yoga has changed no the the real meaning of yoga means to to unite with the lord to be with the lord but nowadays yoga has reduced to some exercises you know, for to maintain <clears throat> your posture to maintain good health like that so people say that i tried yoga i tried mon vrat i went for these uh, sometimes people are sent to a dark room with the one one green light uh, burning and they say that oh, it was very mm -hmm. it felt very nice but at the end of the day it will not bring them peace it will not uh, it will not calm their mind so they say that i tried so many things but it did not work so they give up on spirituality why because they have only uh, tried to come to the level of the mind but actually if you want real satisfaction or you want full satisfaction you have to go even more inside even more internal you have to go you have to go to the soul because the when only if the soul is satisfied then your mind can be at peace so krishna is saying that such a person has given up all varieties of desire for sense gratification see the mind is always going to ask us for more and more sense gratification but when you come to the level of the soul when you realize that i am spirit soul then we can find satisfaction in the self because we are the spirit soul only then we can be fully satisfied so a sthita pragya is someone who has no desire for sense gratification he has conquered his mind he is now purified of all um, all desires material desires and he finds satisfaction in the self let's go to the next verse
ಸುಖೇಶು ವಿಗತ ಸ್ಪೃಹ ವೀತರಾಗಭಯ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಸ್ಥಿತಧೀರ್ ಮುನಿರುಚ್ಯತೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಅಮಿತ್ಸ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮಿಸರೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅ ಸೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ So in the previous verse, what was Arjuna's question that Krishna answered? Which of these questions did Krishna answer in 55? Okay. In 55, Krishna answered this question. What are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is merged in trans? What are the symptoms? And what are the symptoms Krishna said is that the person has given up varieties of sex gratification. He is satisfied and no desire. alone. Okay. So basically the symptom is that a person is uh, given up all desires for external pleasures and he is finding pleasure internally at the level of the soul. Now, Krishna is going to answer the next question. How does he speak in 56? So what has Krishna said? One who is not disturbed in mind, even amidst the threefold miseries or elated when there is happiness, who is free from attachment, fear and anger is called a sage of steady mind. So this person, a sthita pragya, is not disturbed in mind. So in this verse, is there any reference to speech muni what's that muni no where where istitha istitha dir munir Ah, yeah. No, Sita Dei means mind is steady. Mm-hmm. Actually, there is no reference to how a person speaks in this verse. What Krishna mm-hmm. is describing here is the mentality of, us, of such a person. The mentality. So what is the mentality of such a person? That he is not happy when there is happiness and he is not disturbed in mind when there is distress. that is a mentality of a sthita pragya so because um, see before speech comes one's mentality so in 56 krishna has talked about the mentality of a person and 57 he speak about the speech of a person how mentality comes before the speech of a person for example if there is a wedding of if there's a family wedding right and we see someone who has just entered the wedding venue and we know that that person is a troublemaker So first of all we are thinking oh my god i hope there is no problem in this wedding i hope this person doesn't create a a, a create a scene here we are thinking like that right that's that's what is going on that's the thought process but when we go and meet the person because he has just arrived we go and welcome him we may say i'm very happy to see you please come you're welcome so the mentality comes before the speech so here krishna has talked about the mentality and in the next verse he will talk about the speech of a person so he is saying that such a person is not disturbed even amongst miseries and he is not happy when there is happiness now what are these three fold miseries what are the three fold miseries of material nature the three fold miseries of material nature are adhyatmika adi bhautika and adi daivika so adhyatmik miseries our miseries which are coming from our own mind and our own body we may have some disease or we may have some um, uh, uh, stress issues which are troubling our mind so these are called adhyatmika klesha or adhyatmika misery miseries coming from our own mind and body 
Then we have Adi Bhautika, miseries that are caused by other living entities. It can be a mosquito, it can be a terrorist, it can be any living entity that is causing us miseries. So that is called Adi Bhautika. And Adi Daivika are miseries arriving from, uh, miseries coming from natural calamities, earthquakes, famines, cyclones. So these are the miseries that are caused by um, natural calamities. So these are the three miseries of material nature. So Krishna is saying that Asthita Pragya, he is not disturbed by the threefold miseries. Neither is he happy when there is happiness. Then he is talking about three factors here, three things here. He says that such a person is free from attachment, fear and anger. Vita, Raga, Bhaya and Krodha. Such a person is free from attachment, fear and anger. A devotee is free from attachment. A devotee does not say that, okay, I will do my service if such a such a condition is fulfilled. For example, um, our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, he had received the instruction from his spiritual master to go and preach in the English language in the West. That was the instruction he received from his guru. And the very first meeting, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told him, do this. Now, Srila Prabhupada had no finances. He had never traveled to the West. He has no contacts in the Western world. So, Srila Prabhupada didn't think that, okay, but only if I have money, I will go to the West and try to uh, follow the instruction of my Guru. All that he wanted was, I want to follow the instruction of my spiritual master. So, he went through so many difficulties. Now, Srila Prabhupada, he didn't have age by his side. He was on the verge of his 70th birthday when he went on to the West. He did not have a flight ticket. He had to go by sea. After he reached the US, of course, he has no contacts, no money. And he suffered two massive heart attacks on the, on the Jaladuta, on the boat, on the ship that took him to uh, the US. Then after he reached there, it was very, very cold. The climate is too cold for him. There is no, uh, uh, I mean, in the Western world at that time, vegetarianism was something that was never heard of. It was very, for them, vegetarianism was something that is very weird. He had to stay with a family where in the fridge he had to, sh he had to share the fridge. I mean, in that fridge, the family uh, had meat stored there. So he had to share the fridge with them. Then after when he went to stay in another place, the person with whom he shared the room, he came under the effect of drugs and he, he attacked Srila Prabhupada. And, and then uh, even in the Western world, initial days, his typewriter was stolen. His manuscripts, was, he was translating the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was translating the books for us. And all his manuscripts also were stolen. So imagine he has gone through so many difficulties, but then Srila Prabhupada didn't say that only if I have this, 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 this facility, only then I will try to fulfill the instruction that my Guru Maharaj has given me. So a devotee is free from attachment. A, a free from fear also. A devotee is completely fearless. Srila Prabhupada did not fear that, okay, I have no money, I have no contacts, I don't have age, I don't have youth. So how will I do it? He has no fear. He has full faith that Krishna will uh, help him. Even uh, if you see in our, uh, in the story of Prahalad, pra so many times Hiranyakashipu tried to kill Prahalad. He, he, he threw him from the cliff. He, he made him drown in the water. He, he tried to set him on fire. And uh, so many other ways, no? they, they, he tried to get elephants to trample Prahalad. But never once did Prahalad have fear uh, in his mind or on his face. He had full faith that the Lord will save him. So a devotee is completely fearless. And anger, a devotee is also free from anger. Now, of course, uh, anger can be spiritual also. For example, when Hanuman went to Lanka and he burned the whole of Lanka, he was anger. But that anger is spiritual anger, transcendental anger. We are talking about material anger. So a devotee is free from attachment, fear and anger, Krishna says. So anger... Uh, let's say somebody is uh, somebody is putting in some effort and there is no result. The result is not coming. The doesn't mean that the devotee is angry at the Lord that, oh, why did you do this to me? A devotee will never tell the Lord, why did you do this to me? He is never angry, even if the results does not come. Because how does a devotee think? A devotee thinks, 
if something if there is any good outcome is because of krishna's mercy if there is any bad outcome it's because of my own karma this is how a devotee thinks but material calculation is completely the opposite if something good is there this is because of my own effort because i am qualified because i worked hard i studied well i made the right choices but if something bad happens oh god is unjust there is no god why does god do this to me but a devotee doesn't think like that यह सर्वत्रान विस्नेह तत्तत्प्राप्य शुभाशुभम नाभिनंदति नद्वेष्टि तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता ट्रांसलेशन इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड वन हु इज अनअफेक्टेड बाय व्हाटएवर गुड और इवल ही मे ऑब्टेन नेदर प्रेजिंग इट नॉर डिस्पाइसिंग इट इज फर्मली फिक्स्ड इन परफेक्ट नॉलेज so here krishna is saying how does a person speak how does he speak he says that he is unaffected by good or evil he neither praises it nor he despises it what we just discussed no that a person um, uh he remains balanced in the material world he is uh, unaffected by good or evil so whether the result even if the result is good he does not uh, glorify himself and even if the effect is evil if it's not in his favor then he does not blame god we just said that so this is how a person speaks so here krishna is answering arjuna's question how does he speak he neither praises it nor despises it 58 yada samharate chayam purmongani vasarvashah ंद्रिया So what is Krishna here? Krishna is giving an example. He is giving the example of a tortoise drawing its limbs within the shell. See here, when the tortoise sees danger, the tortoise is very much aware that his strong uh, point is his shell because the shell is very very hard. So when the tortoise sees danger, he withdraws the limbs inside. He knows that the limbs are weak. The limbs are its weakness. so he withdraws the limbs inside the shell so this is what a devotee does when he sees danger or he sees something that is not good for his spirituality immediately he withdraws himself from that because the senses are our weakness and krishna is our strength devotional service is our strength so we have to withdraw the sense organs from the sense objects so the sense organs are eyes ears skin tongue and nose sense objects are form sound touch taste and smell so we withdraw the eyes from the form when we see something that is not favorable for our krishna consciousness this is what a devotee does we saw the story of ajamila now ajamila he went to get flowers for offering it to the lord but when he saw the prostitute embracing that man in the forest he became agitated so what he had to do was he should have withdrawn his eyes from that form he should have not continued to see that so this is what krishna is saying that a devotee he withdraws the sense organs from the sense objects just as how a tortoise withdraws its limbs when it sees danger into the shell so this is what we should do when we because our weakness just like how the tortoise weakness are the limbs our weakness is our senses so we have to withdraw our senses now of course the tortoise cannot permanently stay in this state he cannot permanently remain inside the shell so like that we also sometimes for different reasons we may have to um, associate with people who are not devotees we may have to uh, see or hear some topics which are which are not really krishna conscious hmm? for maybe for social obligations or family traditions or family obligations or for the sake of preaching we may have to do it 
But as soon as we see that there is danger, as soon as we see that this is too much, this is not good for my spiritual life, immediately we should withdraw ourselves. So this is how he sits, Krishna is saying. How a Thitta Pragya sits. He withdraws his senses from the sense objects. See here, just as how the tortoise withdraws its um, limbs, Asthita Pragya knows that his senses are his weakness and he will not allow the senses to be drawn by Maya. 59. Vishayavini Vartande Nirahara Dehinaha Rasavarjam Rasopyasya Param Drishtvani Vartate Translation, though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense objects remain. But seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. See, now what Krishna is saying that although, because previously he's talking about how the soul has to withdraw its senses, right? Withdraw the senses from the sense objects. Now what Krishna is saying but although uh, the soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense objects still remains. The taste for sense objects still remains. For example, uh, see here Krishna is using the word ahara, nir ahara. Nir ahara means by negative restrictions. Now let's say somebody is an alcoholic. Now an alcoholic is going to think that alcohol is ahar for him, is his necessity. He will not think, see, is alcohol a necessity? No. Food, shelter, clothing, these are, our, these are our necessities. Alcohol is not a necessity. But for somebody who's an alcoholic, he thinks that I cannot do without alcohol because he's addicted. Or somebody who's addicted to drugs also. He thinks that I cannot be without alcohol. I cannot be without the drugs. So for him, he thinks that it is ahar. It is a necessity. Now, if you tell the person, you don't drink, and he tries to give it up by negative restrictions, then still the taste for sense object remains. Still the, the temptation will be there for that person unless the person goes to a rehabilitation center, undergoes proper treatment. This person who is a severe alcoholic will not be able to give up alcohol. So by negative uh, restriction, we cannot control our senses. So what is the solution to this? The solution is by experiencing a higher taste, Krishna says, higher taste. When we, when we take to Krishna consciousness, then we feel, when we get the happiness, that satisfaction, then we realize that what we were previously hankering for is, uh, is not our necessity as we were previously thinking, is not our necessity because now we have developed a higher taste. Just as how um, when we eat prasad, we always know, no, prasad, that taste that is there in prasad is, is, is not the same taste that we may get if when we have non-prasad food. It's not the same taste. Why? Because prasad has higher taste. So when we develop a higher taste, then we can give up other things that are below that. Below that. The lower um, things can be, can be given up by developing a higher taste. That is the solution to this problem. That even though we try to restrict our senses, the taste for sense of it remains. So how to resolve this issue? By developing a higher taste. See, if, if, a, if a child has a toy in his hand and you just tell the child, give the toy to me, the child will not be ready to give it to you. The child is going to cling on to it. The child will say, no, I don't, I'm not going to give it to you. But if you give a child a bigger, better, more attractive toy, then the child will take your new toy and then be ready to give up the old toy, right? Because now he's getting something bigger and better and more attractive. So we can give up the lower taste only by developing a higher taste, only by developing a higher taste. We cannot artificially restrict the senses. We cannot, we, because the senses need some engagement, something we have to do. We have to engage the senses in something. We cannot just say, don't do anything. No, don't engage your senses at all. We cannot come to that level. See, for example, um, now we may be going for a job. We are receiving a salary. Now, if the boss tells us one day that um, 
no need to come to work you stay at home you will get your salary at home will we take the offer or no it's a good yes. or, it's a good deal or not a good deal good deal it's a good deal why not right i stay at home i don't have to work and i'm getting my salary but now if the boss says you stay at home and you do nothing at all you do absolutely nothing can we do it no 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 yeah, yeah we cannot do it because something we have to do otherwise we'll go crazy it's impossible for us to do nothing right something we have to do so the the senses have to be engaged in something or the other that something in which we have to engage our senses is what krishna is calling us higher taste higher taste see when we go to the temple we see why we have the deities because when we see the deities we are engaging our sense of seeing we are engaging our sight in admiring the beautiful form of the lord the deities are so beautifully decorated the flowers the clothes so we are engaging our sense of sight in admiring the the beauty of the deity when we go to the temple we smell the incense we see the flowers the flowers that are offered to the lord then when we receive the flower we smell the flower why because we are engaging the sense of smell in the lord when we hear krishna katha when we hear kirtan we are engaging our hearing in the um service of the lord when we speak krishna katha when we preach we are engaging our tongue or when we eat prasad we are engaging our tongue in tasting the remnants of the lord so that's how we engage our senses in the service of the lord because the senses need some engagement we cannot say that senses should not engage in anything at all that's not possible so that's why we have to develop a higher taste once we develop a higher taste then we will give up our propensity to enjoy the lower things so asthita pragya is one who can give up uh, the taste for sense objects by experiencing a higher taste resisting temptation by while, while holding on to attachments is like fighting an enemy while staying shackled if we are tied up by ropes and we have to fight an enemy first what we have to do we have to first untie ourselves we have to get the ropes off us in order to be able to fight the enemy if we try to fight the enemy when we are still shackled then we will not be able to fight with our full strength so if we are trying to resist temptation while we are still holding on to attachments then it's not um, it's not a good fight that we are going to be able to uh, put up yatato syapi kaunteya purushasya vipaschitah indriyani pramadhini aranti prasabham manah translation the senses are so strong and impetuous o arjuna that they forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them so the senses are very very strong uh, krishna is saying they carry away the mind of even a man of discrimination in the previous class we saw how vishwamitra was carried away just by the sound of the anklets of menaka so so strong uh, the mind is see just as how we have uh, the five fingers and the five fingers are connected to our palm in the same way the five senses are internally connected to the mind so even a man of discrimination can be carried away by the mind can be carried away by the senses krishna is saying so what is the solution how are we going to be able to conquer it on the strength of devotional service on the strength of bhakti on the strength of chanting the holy name because there is a lot of potency in devotional service there is a lot of shakti in bhakti haridas thakur just on the strength of chanting the holy name he was able to defeat maya devi herself imagine maya devi herself came but haridas thakur remained fixed up so on the strength of devotional service only we can defeat maya in the shrimad bhagavatam canto 9 chapter 6 there is a description of the 
fall down of Saubhari Muni. Now, Saubhari Muni was a very, very um, powerful sage, very, very potent sage. And he decided that he wants to meditate under water. He was able to, he had the ability to hold his breath for several years. He didn't have to breathe. So he went to meditate under water. But he fell down because he got agitated by seeing fish mating in the water. Just imagine. Just by seeing the sight of two fishes mating in the water, it led to his fall down. So the senses are so strong, so strong. Very hard to defeat them. Then he realizes his mistake. So then Saubari Muni says, in the beginning I was alone and engaged in performing the austerities of mystic yoga. But later because of association of fi fish engaged in sex, I desired to marry. Then I became the husband of 50 wives and in each of them I begot 100 sons. And thus my family increased to 5,000 members. So just imagine hmm, from being that yogi who, uh, who could hold his breath, such a powerful yogi, he was not able to control his senses. So by mystic yoga, by such practices, by austerities and tapasya, we cannot control our senses. Only by bhakti yoga, we can control our senses. When we resolve, I will not do this, the mind erases the not. So mind is like that. We say that I will not do this, but the mind says, he's, the mind erases the not and says, I will do this. That's how the mind works. The mind is always going to attract us to do that which we should not do. That's why we should not uh, follow our mind. Hmm? Higher than the mind is the intelligence. So Krishna says, use your intelligence, buddhi yoga. 61. Tani Sarvani Sayamya Yukta Asita Matparaha Vashehi Yasyendriyani Tasya Pragna Pradishthita Translation One who restrains his uh, senses, keeping them under full control and fixes his consciousness upon me is known as a man of steady intelligence. See, here for the first time, Krishna is revealing about himself as the object on whom the senses should be fixed up. So Krishna is saying, one who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control and fixes his consciousness upon me, Krishna is saying, upon me. He is not talking about some third person. He is not saying that you fix your concentration on God or on Bhagavan. He's saying, fix it on me. So here he's talking about that the senses, the consciousness should be fixed up upon Krishna. Hmm? There is no doubt. There is no, um, there is no room for any uh, speculation here. Krishna very clearly is saying that we have to fix our consciousness upon him. So here Krishna is talking about control, concentration and conquest. What, have we, how, what do we have to control? Krishna is saying, restrain his senses. So we have to control our senses. Then he is saying that you have to concentrate, keeping them under full control and fix consciousness upon me. So we have to concentrate our mind on Krishna. And then the senses are conquered. So such a person who is fixed up, then he has conquered his senses. Such a man is, such a person is a man of steady intelligence. See, in our uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a story of King Ambarish and Sage Durvasa. Very interesting that today we are discussing the story. It was not planned that way. Because in this story, uh, we have King Ambarish, who was a devotee, and he was following the Ekadasi Vrata. Today is Ekadasi in uh, India and some other parts of the world. In this part of the world here in Chile, it is Dwadasi. So Ambarish had followed the Ekadasi Vrata, and he was about to break his fast on Dwadasi. It's very important that the fast is broken on time, on Dwadasi. If you don't break the fast within the stipulated period on Dwadasi, you will not get the full benefit of your Ekadasi fasting. So in this story, Ambarish is just about to break his Ekadasi fast on Dwadasi. And that's when Sage Durvasa arrives. Now, who is Sage Durvasa? He is known for his 
What is anger? For his anger, yes. He appears even in the Mahabharata. When does he appear in the Mahabharata? In Mahabharata. Uh, when they are in the forest, the Pandavas. Yes. Uh, when the Pandavas are in the forest uh, for 13 years, um, he goes to uh, uh, he, he, he goes for arms and asks them for food. Okay, and then? Um, I think uh, Draupadi prays to the sun god. You're getting there? <laughs> yeah. It's... Yeah, that's so Draupadi awesome. had, a, had an Akshay Patra. No? What was the yeah. quality of that, which she got from Surya Dev? Uh, it can feed many people. Ah, as long as she eats. Ah, as long as she eats, she right? Eats. So until Draupadi has not eaten, that that the food in that vessel will multiply as many times as required okay. until she eats. But once she eats, then that will not happen anymore. So this was given to her by Surya. Dev. Now Durva Samuni went to the forest, and of course, when you receive a guest, Vedic culture is you have to you have to feed the person, isn't it? So Durva Samuni did he go alone? No. With how many people? With how many army? Huh? He went along with his army? Not army, his disciples. So disciples. how many of them were there? <laughs> 10,000. He went with 10,000 of his followers. Okay. So it's not easy to feed 10,000 people, isn't it? But then Yudhishthir mm -hmm. invited him and then uh, Durva Samuni said that I will go and have a bath. And then I will come back. Now, Draupadi was in a dilemma because she had already eaten at that time. So there was nothing. What is she going to what is she going to serve Durvasa? So they were afraid that Durvasa will be very angry. No? And then he may curse. Then, of course, Krishna comes to the rescue. That's another story. But anyway, Durvasa was known for his anger. So in this story also, Durvasa appears just when Ambarish is about to break his fast on Dwadasi. Let's see what happens. Okay, we'll see a video. Story of King Ambrish. King Ambrish was a very devout king. He was the son of King Mandata. King Ambrish was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. His story comes in Srimad Bhagwat Puran. It is said that once King Ambrish performed the Dwadashi fast which required that the king must start the fast on Ekadashi and break the fast at the start of Dwadashi and also feed all the people. When the time of breaking the fast came near, Rishi Durvasa suddenly came to meet King Ambrish. King Ambrish asked Rishi Durvasa to be his guest. Rishi Durvasa went to take bath in river Yamuna and it so happened that he did not return at the time of breaking the fast. The Brahmins advised King Ambrish to break his fast in the absence of Rishi Durvasa. When Rishi Durvasa returned and saw that King Ambrish had broken the fast, he became very angry. In his anger, he produced a ferocious demon to kill Ambrish. But as Ambrish was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu, Sutarshan Chakra of Vishnu intervened and killed the demon. The Chakra then started following Durvasa to kill him. In great fear, Durvasa went to Brahmaji and Lord Shiva to save him from Sutarshan Chakra but they expressed their inability. Then Durvasa went to Lord Vishnu and asked him to stop his chakra. Lord Vishnu told Durvasa that the chakra could only be stopped by Ambrish and advised Durvasa to go to Ambrish and request him to stop the chakra. Rishi Durvasa then approached King Ambrish and asked him for his forgiveness. King Abrish requested the chakra to stop and not kill Durvasa. 
This story from Srimad Bhagavad Puran teaches us that Lord protects his devotee under any circumstances. If we keep our faith in God and if we are devoted to God, we will be protected at all times. If you like this video, please click the like button. So what do we learn from the story? That anger can destroy. Anger can destroy, yes, very nice. God, that God protects his devotees the most. God protects his devotees, very nice. What is? The, the devotees are more dear to the Lord. The devotees are very dear to the Lord. So therefore, we should be very careful not to offend a devotee. Mm -hmm. Never commit Vaishnava Aparad. Never offend a devotee because that is very, very serious crime. See, there is a difference mm -hmm. between a sin and an offense. Between Papa and Aparad. Which is more serious? Papa or Aparad? Aparad is more serious. Aparad is more serious. So we can, mm -hmm. I mean, Vaishnava Aparad is there and Guru Aparad also is there. So Aparad mm -hmm. is a more serious crime. Hmm? Papa, how can we um, overcome sinful reactions? By devotional service, by chanting the holy name. But Aparad, the only solution to overcome Aparad is to is to, to ask forgiveness to the devotees if you offend them. Exactly. If you offend them. Yes. The only way to overcome Vaishnava Aparad is to ask for forgiveness from the devotee whom we have offended. The mm -hmm. holy name does not have that potency. Sorry? Does the holy name have the potency to overcome Aparad? No. No. Yes. <laughs> Actually, the potency is there, but the potency is locked by Krishna. The potency is there, but it is locked by Krishna because, remember, Krishna can override the rules of the game for his devotee. So when his devotee is offended, then there is no other escape, there is no other way to overcome it other than asking for forgiveness from the devotee whom you have offended. As we saw in this case, Lord Vishnu said, I will not free you from the Sudarshan Chakra. Vishnu, Lord Vishnu could do it or he could not do it? Yes. He could yes. do it because it's his weapon. It is his weapon. Of course, he can control his weapon. But even he said, I will not do it. So the potency is locked by the Lord. He said, you go and ask forgiveness from Ambrish Maharaj. So then Ambrish Maharaj uh, forgave him because he's a devotee. But why are we talking about this story here? What is the context? See here, Krishna is talking about one who rest, a sthita pragya is one who restrains his senses and keeps them under full control and fixes his consciousness upon me, Krishna says. Now, mm -hmm. if you see uh, Durvasa Muni and King Ambarish, King Ambarish is a grihastha, Durvasa mm -hmm. Muni is a sannyasi. Now, externally speaking, who is in a higher position, a sannyasi or a grihastha? Sannyasi. A sannyasi, correct. Now, King Ambarish is a kshatriya. And Durvasa Muni is a Brahmana. Now, who is, excellent speaking, who is superior? The Kshatriya or the Brahmanas? Brahmanas. Brahmanas. Yes, but here we saw Ambarish was completely, uh, Ambarish defeated uh, Durvasa Muni completely. Yes. Why? Because Ambarish fixed up his mind on the Lord. Durvasa Muni's mind was not fixed up on the Lord. Durvasa Muni's concentration was what? I, me, myself. I should be honored. How can you eat? That's an insult to me. So Durvasa Muni's focus was not Krishna. Durvasa Muni's focus was not the Lord. Durvasa Muni's focus was I should be honored. Mm -hmm. So Krishna is saying that a sthita pragya fixes his consciousness on me, Krishna says. But Durvasa Muni's mind was not fixed up on the Lord. That's why we brought up the story here. Okay, and so how about uh, if yeah, yeah. No, no tell, tell. I'll tell them. So as Sita Pragya fixes his mind, his consciousness on the Lord. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, Lavina now. No, I just wanted to if anybody defend if uh, insults somebody's guru, then what is the means how you said that uh, if we insult or or Vaishnavas, the we have to for, we have to ask the forgive we have to ask the forgiveness to that disciple. And how about the people who insult or 
गुरु इफ सामने इंसान सब गुरु 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 अपराध या दैट इज आल्सो अपराध सो अगेन द ओनली द ओनली वे टू कम आउट ऑफ दिस इज बाय आस्किंग फॉर फॉरगिवनेस देयर इज नो अदर वे बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू कमिट एन अपराध इट इमीडिएटली ट्रिगर्स ऑफ योर फॉल डाउन it will immediately trigger your fall down unless you ask for forgiveness and the person forgives you of course the uh, vaishnava will always forgive we saw ambarish mm. was ready to forgive durvasa all the durvasa was mm. ready to kill him so now modern day mentality is if somebody slaps you immediately you want to hit the person back immediately no <laughs> reflex action but uh, a devotee is compassionate so when the forgiveness was asked for a vaishnava also forgives okay thank you you're welcome story okay so here we see that ambrish is a satri and grihastha and durvasa is brahman and sanyasi but still ambrish was able to uh, overcome because his concentration was fixed up on the lord but not that of durvasa muni so see the yes in the no to a no for example if we are driving and we come across a road block that says that the street is closed now we go mm-hmm. around again take a u turn and I again come back to this place then we say this person is foolish the road is already blocked we don't see we don't fail to see that there is another sign that says that okay you take this road this particular street is closed but you can go here or you can go here you can take a tour this side or that side so we have to see the yes in the no see the yes in the no so when one door is closed it means that another door has been opened up when we when we control our senses we have to take higher taste when that other door is open we develop a higher taste and don't get um don't get don't get depressed that we cannot engage in sense gratification hmm? the way to say no to temptation is to say yes to devotion so when we develop higher taste when we take bhakti when we have devotion in our heart then we will not fall a prey to temptation so see the yes in the no to a no change is easier when we focus on starting something positive not on stopping something negative so we should not only focus on don't do this don't do that don't do this don't do that if we only tell a child no 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 don't do this don't do that then the child is not going to be able to follow your instruction but instead you give the child better engagement right you if you tell the child don't watch tv the, the child may not be willing to switch off the tv but if you tell the child come let's do something together or let's go out for a walk or let's do some painting together let's do some drawing together then the child will be willing to come to you isn't it so focus on something positive not on stopping something negative because again we have to give the mind some engagement we have to give the senses some engagement that engagement is the uh, higher taste stop worrying about avoiding temptation start working on cultivating absorption see uh, we have four rules no meat eating no intoxication no illicit sex and no gambling and we also have one instruction the first instruction that is given to us is chant 16 rounds so anybody can chant you if we focus more on no meat eating no intoxication no illicit sex and no gambling and we are not chanting then we will not be able to go very far we will not be able to make much progress but irrespective of whether we are eating meat or in, engaging in intoxication or gambling or whatever it is if we start chanting when we start chanting automatically we will lose the taste for these four sinful activities it will happen by default it will automatically happen when you start chanting automatically you will no more enjoy these four sinful activities it happens automatically it happens naturally and i'm saying this from personal experience and many people anyone who has experience in chanting will be able to guarantee that after they started chanting automatically they have lost the taste for me eating intoxication illicit sex and gambling so we it's better to focus more on what you should do than focus on what you should not do because what you should not do will automatically happen if you do what you are supposed to do purification reveals the healthier choice to be also the tastier choice now for example 
if you give a child candy and carrot, now which is the healthier choice? Carrot. Car carrot is the healthier choice. But for the child, which is the tastier choice? Caramel. The candy is the tastier candy. choice. So when we are, when we are, when we have a childlike mentality, or when we are not yet purified, no, when we are less intelligent, then we think that engaging in sense gratification is the tastier option. And restricting our senses may be the healthier option, but I want the tastier option. I want the candy. So uh, a, a less intelligent person or a person uh, may think that uh, restricting or not engaging in sense gratification is actually the less, is, it may be a healthier choice, but it is not the tastier choice. But when we engage in chanting, when we engage in devotional services, when we do bhakti, then automatically we will see that the healthier choice is also the tastier choice. Previously, we were thinking the other way around because of our own impurification. See, if the, the, when somebody is affected by jaundice, in the previous, uh, previous times, there was no medicine for jaundice. The only cure for jaundice was sugar candy. Okay, but the problem is because this person has jaundice, because he's in a disease state, when he takes the sugar candy, that sugar candy tastes very, very bitter. It's very bitter. Sugar is not bitter, sugar is sweet. But because he is diseased, he feels that sugar candy to be very, very bitter. But then, if he wants to be cured of the disease, he has to take the bitter medicine. When he takes the sugar candy, he takes the bitter medicine. But as he's cured of the disease, that very same sugar which was tasting bitter now tastes very, very sweet because now he is cured of the disease. So when we are materially, materially diseased, we think that sense, controlling the senses and engaging in bhakti is very boring, it's very restrictive, it's not the tastier choice. But when we are when we are purified of our material disease, when we are cured of our material disease, by taking the medicine, Right by taking by chanting our rounds. Initially, when we chant, we think that it's very boring. I'm not able to do it. It's taking my time. I don't enjoy it. But, but then it's because we are in a disease state. But if we continue to take the medicine, then we will be uh, cured of our disease. And that very same chanting, you will hold on to your chanting as your life and soul. Then one day, if you are not able to chant, you think that everything is going wrong that day. You just cannot. Everything you you go insane if you don't chant your round. You will come to that. Level. So with, with, with time, it is it will be revealed that the tastier choice is also the healthier choice. For that, we have to be purified. For that, we have to be um, cured from our material disease. Let's go to 62. Okay, I think we'll stop here. We'll continue in the next class. If Krishna so sanctions. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So in the next uh, class, hopefully we will finish up the chapter. Yeah. And, uh, we've already put up the question paper. Did you all see? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you all worked on it? How was the question paper? Is it difficult, hard, easy? No, we'll go through again the then we, we it's easier. Not easier, I can say that. For you it is easier, not for us. But still we have to do a second second time we have to see the videos and so that we can understand some things okay so at least from my side. huh what's that at least from my side it's like that it's... okay so if you have the book bhagavad gita you don't need to refer to the slides you don't need to refer to anything else everything is there in that book from in and i in uh, in each question i've also put the shloka number where you can find the answer Right, so it, it will make it uh, easier for you easy. to spot the answer. Uh, you know where exactly the answer is in which shloka. So if you have the book, it will be easier for you to see the answer in the book and answer it online. Now, if you don't have the book and you're using the online Veda base, then it will be a better idea for you to print a PDF. I can share the PDF on the... I think, Disha, can you share the PDF in the group, please, for chapter two? Are you there, Disha Jadwani? Okay, she's not there. So anyway, I will speak to her and uh, we will share the 
the, the word file or the PDF in the group and you can work on that on your sheet of paper and check the answers online. And then when you have all your answers ready, you just go to formatives and you can just click the correct answers. That will also be uh, easier for you. Okay. Anything else we need to discuss? No, no. No, <clears throat> no questions? No. Thank you very much, Mataji. Thank you all for uh, attending and for your patience. Thank you. For your sincerity and for your enthusiasm. Thank all you. Thank you all next week. Uh, till then, have a nice week. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha. Srila Prabhupada Kri Krishna Bhagavad Gita Ki Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.